Today I wanted to follow up on evaluated receipt settlement and auto invoice setup, kind of the administration setup. I'd done a overview as part of the invoice against contract or contract terms document, um, kind of the same overview talking through the uh, you know, general principles behind it, but wanted to get into more of the administration function of how you actually turn it on today. Um, so we'll go through a, a brief intro, which is that uh, evaluated receipt settlement automatically creates an invoice and i.e. a payment uh, based upon the receipt of goods. So you don't need the supplier to invoice you. Um, automatic invoicing applies for fixed and reoccurring uh, payments that are on a schedule. And so those are scheduled payments for like leases, software agreements, uh, you know, things of that nature that are known amounts uh, that need to be paid on a scheduled date. You can simplify, make sure that you're getting payment discounts and things like that, um, not have to ha hassle with tracking down vendor invoices, etc. Um, both are great options. They do have some limitations around, um, you know, if they're shipping and tax and unknown amounts uh, that the supplier has to add. Obviously, these are more um, fixed known fees. Um, the system can add tax if you have that set up. It can actually add the sales tax percentage, um, flag it, and, and make sure that sales tax is added, but it can't do um, unknown or variable rate uh, shipping and things like that. So um, great information. So how you actually set this up, the, the first step, there's two steps really to enable it. The first step is to actually enable the parameter. This is obviously a service request. Um, to enable uh, evaluated receipt settlement or ERS. Um, so then after you have support enable that for your realm, you will um, actually go and look at your supplier files. This varies depending on whether it's an SAP setup or a PeopleSoft uh, Oracle slash generic setup. Um, so in the SAP setup, it's actually the purchase organization to supplier mapping file. In the generic setup, it's in the supplier location file. Um, usually it's actually X E R S Y as the field name or the unique name in the file. You'll need to turn that to yes. And obviously the reason that we want to control it in both places um, is that we want you to work with the supplier, um, tell them, hey, you aren't going to submit invoices uh, for these transactions anymore. We're going to automatically generate the payment. Um, they'll need to know that, that that payment's coming, how to apply it to your account, what it's for, etc. And so you obviously have some work with the supplier to let them know you aren't going to generate invoices. We're going to do automatic settlement. Um, and so this payment's coming. From there, once you've enabled it in your realm, you've enabled it for the supplier, um, you're actually going to go on the specific transaction. In this case, we're looking at, at contract terms, but it could also be on the purchase requisition. Um, and so you can control this via the document as well. So in this particular case, when I go and I look at the fixed and reoccurring for, uh, terms here, you'll see the auto invoice. When I choose this yes function, it's going to actually not allow the supplier to invoice anymore. And it's going to automatically generate a invoice on the date that it's due. It is important to realize that for like legacy agreements and things like that, it won't generate invoices for past, past due payments. And so if I were to change this to today, currently it's uh, January 29th. So if I change this to say January 17th, that date's in the past, it's not going to generate a payment for that. And so it is important to realize that it will only be effective for future um, dated invoices and things like that. Obviously, the receipt's a little bit different. Um, the receipt will generate the payment. Um, great information out on Connect, by the way. This is a, a Connect page that you can go and find. Um, it also talks about um, the fact that the ERS, uh, basically that settlement runs every 24 hours. So once that receipt is processed, approved, um, there's a process that runs in the background every 24 hours that will then turn that uh, receipt into an invoice. Um, it's also important to note that um, all of the invoice rules still apply. So any type of invoice rules, approvals, etc. you have will apply unless you have done something in the configuration of the approval rules to outlie that. Um, similarly, uh, ERS, uh, right, for, for products and things like that, it's just ERS allowed, yes, and that's going to trigger that payment or that invoice off the receipt. So um, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the video today. Um, hope this helps. Uh, it's a great function, really improves, uh, you know, processing and efficiency. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.